Hey everyone. As you can see, this is not my normal setup. This is not a normal stream. In fact, nothing is normal right now. A power surge took out most of my equipment. Despite precautions and protectors and all of that. something you should pay attention to when your life and your income relies on electronics. You should check your insurance policy and see if there's an exclusion for computer equipment because I didn't know that was a thing and I didn't see it in the 50 page document until I needed it. Yeah. You also shouldn't do your monthly grocery shopping before a big storm comes. Because it's not those three pints of Ben and Jerry's that hurts throwing away. I mean, it does hurt, it hurts bad. It's the condiments. Do you know how expensive it is to replace those condiments? There's so many and you need them immediately. Like you always have the condiments. I miss my condiments. I don't have any condiments. My biggest screw up during the storm though was actually not getting ice ahead of time. Those of you who know Penny know that she is allergic to everything under the sun. Like 99 of 100 things, she's allergic to them. So she has special food. We tried every food under the sun. Finally found one and it has to be refrigerated. So when the power went off, I remembered the food, but I didn't get the cooler out of the trash pile, also known as my garage. I had no idea where it was. I had two little tiny flashlights and two candles because my power never goes out. I wasn't gonna lose power, I was fine. Yeah, Milton's a bastard. So I had a little cooler bag from Costco and a gallon of frozen water that I put the dog food in and tried to keep it warm. And within two days, tried to keep it cold, not warm. Oh, my brain's not working. I haven't been able to get my medicine in two, three, three, three weeks because there's a national shortage. And on top of there being a national shortage, there is um, issues because the whole state is destroyed. So after two days, Penny got sick. And I don't know if it was from the stress of the storm or from the food, but. I feel like the worst pup mom ever. She's better now, but God, that sucked. But I am not having a pity party. I am happy, I am fortunate, I am lucky because so many other people had it so much worse than me. It, it seemed like hell. It seemed like it couldn't have gotten any worse. I didn't realize how reliant I am on technology and my house my block is a dead zone for my cell phone for some reason. I'm lucky if I can get one bar sometimes. I can get texts out, absolutely no web pages. Um, occasionally I can get a couple posts on Twitter. No Facebook, no YouTube, no, nothing informative, just Twitter, cesspool, you know. And in the middle of the night when the storm is raging and the power goes off and it sounds like your roof is going to come off because the wind is howling and making these noises that sound like two cats killing each other. Literally, my cats were freaking out because it sounded like cats like howling and screeching. It was dead silent. There was no white noise from the fans, from the equipment running, from the air purifier. It was dead silent. And I couldn't even get anything on my phone to see what was going on. I couldn't even, I don't even have a battery operated radio. I don't even have a plug-in radio. Like, I am so reliant on Wi-Fi. And I had my Wi-Fi backed up, but a power surge took everything out. So my modem was fried. So even though I had a battery backup and I could have intermittently used the Wi-Fi to check things, it was fried, it was out. Plus, spectrum went out anyways and it was gone forever. It's so creepy and eerie 
and you hear every sound and crack and bang and things hitting the house. I had no idea what it was. It was a door to a, a shed on the side of my house, a little plastic shed that had come loose and was banging, but I, I thought people's houses might have been blowing away. I don't know, I couldn't tell. It was pitch black outside, you couldn't see anything. It was freaking terrifying. And I've got all five animals in the bed with me just shaking. It was an event. But in the end, I still had a roof over my head. My poor neighbors, I just found out, brand new windows, hurricane resistant windows, everything was safe. They were like fortified generator, they were good to go. Their windows leaked. So like the whole bottom two feet of their entire house is ruined. But that's even okay. Helene was the one that really got us. My 89 year old grandmother, she'll be 89 in exactly one month. She is the sweetest thing you have ever met. She, I don't think has ever said a bad word about anyone except maybe Joe Biden, but we're not even getting into that. That's, that's her deal. Just Joan Cleaver, just adorable, sweet. Her house flooded. She lost everything. And the funny part is, back in 93, hopefully most of you are old enough to remember that, there was a no-name storm called the Storm of the Century. This storm just rolled in in the middle of the night. And for those of you up north, you got a big snowstorm. But down here, it was this big unexpected surge of water that like no one predicted or prepared for. And my grandma and grandpa lived in a condo on the water at the time. And all of a sudden water starts, the, the river starts coming up to their house and their sliding glass door. And there's pictures of their sliding glass door. I'll see if I can find it. Um, waves crashing against their sliding glass door. And it was, it happened so fast. They were trapped. It surrounded them and they were trapped in their second floor loft for a while, a day or two. There's no bathroom up there. I have to ask her what she did for the bathroom. That's interesting. I just thought of that 20 years later. Anyways, so she lost everything then. And when she moved into the house she's in now, she made sure that even though it was in a flood zone, it had never flooded ever, even in that storm, which was the worst for that area up until this time. No one expected this to happen. Helene flooded places that had never been flooded. She bought the house because it had never flooded. She didn't want to ever have to go through that again. And it happened. Like at that point in time in her life, she just wanted to relax and enjoy life. And now she is sitting in an old chair. That's not her lift chair. It's not comfortable on concrete floors with drywall missing four feet up and everything she owns in a pile in the front yard. Fortunately, she has insurance that will cover that, but it's still, it's the stress and the hell of what you have to go through. The only thing I've heard her be sad about was the fact that when she went to stay with my cousin, her cat didn't get along with my cousin's cat and her dog. So the cat hid behind the refrigerator the whole time and she was upset because he's very fat and he squeezed himself into a six inch spot. You know, it's very concerning. I'm sure he was scared. He's okay now that he's home. And the other thing is I have been taking her photographs. She has photographs back from the 1800s. She is very um, sentimental, has, she has handwritten letters from like a great, great, great grandmother, I believe from the mid 1800s where she sent them back and forth to another cousin that she saved and we have copies of them. 
not copies of them, the originals. Unfortunately, I have all of that because I was preserving it because apparently back in the day they liked rubber cement and they would rubber cement those Polaroid photos and the even the ones before that. I can't remember what they're called. There's a name for them. I think they're, it's like a number or something or a couple letters. They would rubber cement those onto some construction paper. Black, always black. Oh, getting those off is a bitch. Sorry. So I spent the past couple years every so often archiving her photographs. So fortunately those were saved because when they when they left, they didn't expect it to flood. They took some precautions, but they didn't get everything up. But I'm missing a box of photos. We're missing some important photos. One of them is um, my great grandmother, her mother during that flood, the no name storm in 93. She was stuck in her condo, but she was a single story condo. So they had to get her out quick and it was a bunch of older ladies. They were in their, you know, 80s at the time. And the city didn't have anything to get them out with. So they brought in a front end loader and they put these little old ladies in the front end loader. And there's a picture of this big front end loader driving out with these little old ladies, little white hairs sticking over the top of it with their little faces sticking up. And it is the cutest picture I've ever seen. One of my favorite pictures and um, we haven't been able to find it. And we're scared that it got destroyed in the flood. My brother had two feet. Um, the restaurant he works at, which is built way up off the ground, had I think 18 inches, but that's enough. That's all it needs. Destroys so much. And then my uncle who is um, disabled, he had a stroke a couple years ago and he's partially paralyzed and um, has dysphagia, aphasia. He has trouble speaking. He can only say certain words and is in a wheelchair. We got him out of his house. She, my mom took him to a hotel, but he had 18 inches of water in his house. And he was devastated because he has probably close to a thousand final records. And again, nobody expected it to flood. They thought maybe some wind damage, worried about trees falling, never expected the flood. So they didn't get everything off the floor. They didn't put everything up on countertops because it wasn't in the cards. So he was devastated that he lost all his music. He was a very big music fan. He is huge metalhead, used to play in a band. Yeah. I was gonna go up there and take some pictures to show you guys because, you know, you say 18 inches of water, you're like, that's nothing, you know, dry it out, which you can. Like for the drywall, you take a foot off the floor. I mean, even if you get it out quick, you can put some holes in the drywall, put some blowers in there and dry it out and not have a lot of damage. But the problem is, is that where they live, it's, there's freshwater springs, but you're also getting all that surge from the Gulf and the Gulf is salt water. So you're either getting salt water or brackish water, which is salt and freshwater mixed. And any salt water that gets into your appliances or anything electronic is going to corrode it. It's ruined, it's done. So these restaurants that had all the equipment that, it, I mean, it touches it, it's done. Your washer, your dryer, your refrigerator, your freezer, your dishwasher, your anything that's touching the floor, anything it touches, done. And so there are volunteer companies, I don't, well, I don't know if they're volunteers, they work for FEMA that are up there that are coming around and just basically gutting everybody's house. Like the homeowner walks around and says, don't take that, don't take that. And everything else goes in the front yard in a pile. The piles are 10 feet high. And I was really scared before Milton. I, I, anybody who saw the news conferences saw the governor on there saying, we gotta get, we gotta do something gotta do something we gotta get this garbage out of here and they provided extra resources but they didn't get cleared up everywhere they focused on like Tampa and St. Pete the worst places if the storm would have gone a little bit north it would have been bad. they were very lucky that they didn't get hit as bad with Milton they did get more but it didn't flood again fortunately they're actually very fortunate to have FEMA there helping because my brother and my uncle don't have insurance. They are the newcomers to the neighborhood and they purchased 
much later than my mom and my grandma. And that was after the market skyrocketed. Everything blew up and was chaotic. And, you know, prices were insane. And so the insurance market exploded. And so to get homeowner's insurance, in Florida, when you live near in the counties along the coast, so much of it is considered flood zone because even if it's the hundred year flood, which is what they were, that's what they're calling Milton, the hundred year flood. I mean, it's, it's a possibility. It's not like you'll never flood. Water can reach your house from the ocean. And so you have a higher insurance premium because it's a possibility probably won't happen in your lifetime, but it's a possibility. Well, it did happen this time, but the lifetime before us, it didn't happen. And the one before that, it didn't happen. And the one before that, it didn't happen. Like it, it, it had never happened in that area before. So point being, when they went to get insurance, they looked it up and As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, homeowner's insurance was going to be, well, flood insurance was going to be six or seven, eight thousand dollars a year. Homeowners, and then flood was going to be the same. So it would be like fifteen thousand dollars a year for insurance. They weren't buying mansions. They weren't buying multi-million dollar homes on the water. It was a normal house. I mean, just to give you perspective it was normally prior to that like a thousand dollars a year max eight hundred dollars to a thousand so that was astronomical and when an area has never flooded I mean hindsight's one thing you look back and you're like well shit they should have got it yeah yeah but when you're looking at paying that much money and it's something that's never happened and you're going to pay 10 to 20% of your home's value a year and insurance that just doesn't that doesn't compute like yeah they just need to shut down Florida just shut it down all right everybody out we're done closed so when I finally got power back I cried and then I opened the news and the first thing I saw was the devastation in Chimney Rock and that is one of the places I have vacationed. It was the last place I went on a vacation before my diagnosis with MS. It was an amazing vacation and it was something, it was, it was like my goal. I want to get better enough that I can do that same thing again. I want to do that same hike again. I want to do that same, you know, whole kayaking trip again. I want to do that whole trip again. I want to be well enough to do that. And that, that was like a life goal. And then to see that the entire town is just gone, gone. The entire village just wiped out. It's hard to process. And then the Biltmore Estate, the Biltmore Village. We would go to North Carolina this time of year every year growing up for a week and stay at my grandparents house up there it was a beautiful house on the mountains cabin on the side of the mountains the leaves would change all the pretty colors anybody that's lived in that area knows what a spectacular time of year it is it's just unreal and growing up i would they always had the little brochure oh, the little brochures at the restaurants and stuff you know as you're walking out the little travel brochures and they always had so many about the Biltmore and we went there one time and toured it and it's just it was just so magical as a child you know dreaming about it and then to see the pictures where it's just piled up with mud and it's just destroyed 
I think a storm happens and people see the damage and they're sympathetic to it, but I don't think they realize how deep rooted it is. Like the things that were damaged for a large part will never be the same. Some of them will be rebuilt. Some of them will be better. Some of them, maybe not. Some of them will be the same, but overall it will never be the same ever. With that said, I'm um, I'm gonna try and get a video out tomorrow. It will not be the same because I don't have the same equipment, I don't have the same resources, I don't have what I need to do my job. But I'm working on it, so. If you would go and watch an old video, like, share it, that would be incredibly helpful and I would really appreciate it. I appreciate your support. And if you sat here and listened to me ramble for this long, I really appreciate you. And if you're sitting here watching my dog's tongue hang out of his mouth like a lizard, I appreciate you too. It's crazy. It really is. It's still hard to process, like, what happened. Even when you're not, like, the hardest hit, you're still hit. I, we can't get gas. Like, they, they post on the local next door, whatever app, when somebody sees a tanker truck. So by the time you get there, it's all sold out. And it's not like Florida has like a good public transit system. Like you have to drive anywhere you go. I finally found some yesterday because I had to go get my medication. They finally switched me back to the old stuff because there's this huge <sighs> nationwide shortage And I go, and this guy's filling up like 20 gas containers in the back of this truck. And I'm like, you know, yeah, you're probably running a generator or whatever, but some of us just need to drive five miles down the street and you're taking it all. Like people hoard stuff during crises and it really screws everyone else. We all remember the great toilet paper crisis. Well, at least those living in Florida do. No, that was probably nationwide, yeah. Well, I thank you all again for your support. I'm sorry I was rambly, but I'm still processing everything. It's, it's just so surreal. Like you get up in the morning and you go to do your normal stuff and you're like, oh wait, I can't do that. I gotta go, I don't know what to do. You can't work more to make money because you don't have what you need to work. So if anybody knows any online jobs, work from home, set my own schedule because some days my MS flares and I just can't get out of bed and like for the past two weeks, <laughs> let me know. I work hard when I can work. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Is it lunchtime? I think it's lunchtime. Thank you again, everyone. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart.